Hello, my name is Tidi Madi. I'm from Team Eyewitness News. So we are looking at different manifestos because all these political parties, and there are many, are putting their offer to the public, to the electorate forward, launching different manifestos, their vision, should you elect them into power, what will they do over the next five years? This past weekend, the UDM, led by Bantu Olemesa, the Freedom Front Plus, as well as the PAC and Azapo, held their manifesto launches. Yes, the EFF had a provincial manifesto launch, but we're looking at those who are making their offer, a fresh offer, out to the public in these elections. So for today, I'm going to start with Bantu Holomisa's UDM. So they launched their manifesto in Midrand at the weekend. I want to start with the issue of optics, even before looking at the issues he decided to discuss. I'm struggling to understand why a party like the UDM, with its roots in a former homeland, with its roots in a former Transkai, rather, in the Eastern Cape, right, is launching a manifesto in Gauteng. I don't understand what that speaks to. A party that is holding on to the little representation it has in the National Assembly doesn't go where it's found support in the past. It goes to a province where there's so much contestation for space to launch a manifesto. I, I don't understand that. He could have even gone to Marikana, where at some point he was garnering support. But no, he goes to Gauteng. And the issue he talks about are things like um, agri-economy, rural revitalization. Again, General, why are these conversations happening in Gauteng? I don't understand. <laughs> I think you needed to go to an audience that would resonate with some of the ideas that you pitch. In fact, the General also backtracks somewhat to 1994, the lead up at least to 1994, to explain why some things have still not come right for us as a country. Of course, you look at 30 years of ANC policy, which he says has only resulted in policy uncertainty that they themselves are confused economically, hence we are where we are. The sluggish economy that can't catch a break, that we keep being told that is only, only like this because of COVID. No, it's not. COVID is but one of many factors that have led us to being where we are. So he does speak about the 30 years, about the Codesa talks, and about the issues that were unresolved. Think about land. Land is important to an EFF. Land is important to the PAC. Land is important to the UDM. It does come up in this particular manifesto. He speaks about corruption. I think if you watched General Bantu Olomisa over the years in Parliament, you know corruption is a critical issue that he stands on raises at all times. So you speak about Busasa state catch, but it also goes far back as the ANC's Chancellor House period, as far as corruption is concerned. So again, a lot of back and forth about how did we get here. He tracks a lot of where the ANC had gone wrong. Remember, he was there at some point in that party. And so he does go back and forth a little bit about where he's watched the ANC going wrong over the years. He looks at load shedding, again, many, many years of wrong actions that have not resulted in the energy issue being resolved. He speaks, again, policy uncertainty that's affected the economy. He speaks about poor infrastructure, tied to that poor governance. All those issues that you and I are watching, joblessness every day and are, are lamenting about, he too laments about those. But the manifesto, of course, is meant to propose answers to some of those questions. I've complained about the fact that he did it in Joburg. What I found interesting about the manifesto is, true to who he is, the general, there's a lot of military talk. I mean, at some point, says militarily speak. I'm like, what is that? What does that even mean? But he does have a lot of, like, patriotic talk, a lot of discipline talk, where he's worried about a lack of discipline and general lawlessness in the country. He does speak about a need to take back the streets, and I think that's a view that many of these political parties have, that it's important to go back and reclaim space that's been taken. I like the ideas that he speaks about in terms of coordinating between ministries, specifically looking at justice, police, correctional services, defense, as well as national intelligence, because part of what's gone wrong is that that network doesn't function function as well as it ought to and so he does zero in on that a little bit there's a thing about infrastructure and industrial parts that he wants to see created along with special economic zones and even that idea of special economic zones is not necessarily unique to the UDM quite a lot of parties speak about a need for that as a pillar that will help create jobs and he wants us to emulate what they've seen happening successfully in some of the Asian countries. Again, I did speak about Kodesa period. History is a big deal for Bantu Olomisa. When he speaks about economy, land, property, he does go back in time and say, we need to go back to those conversations, resolve those issues. I'm speaking about how this is also allowed for things like racism 
and tribalism to rear their heads again. So he does also speak about a national dialogue. Again, if you follow Bantu Olomisa, you do hear him speaking about a Codesa too, that the country needs to go back to having conversations. The other thing for me about Bantu Olomisa is that he's played this uncle role, right, for new parties in parliament, trying to show them the ropes, ushering them in and teaching them the ways of the National Assembly. And I think, in a way, we are watching him do the same thing for parties who are not even represented in parliament. So the IEC will, will, will communicate with those uh, in the party liaison committee, but there are many others who want to participate in the polls, who are outside, and it is him who calls meetings, who tries to help them out. A part of me watches and I think, here's a person who's desperate to find relevance, to remain important and in the picture in some way or another. His talk of the government of national unity, again, is saying, let's find space for everybody to be at the table, because again, his time is running out, his clock is almost up. I can't see a UDM that returns to parliament as anything more than a one percenter. And I think that is part of the crisis that Bantu Holomisa is facing. Again, I go, when you know that that's what you're facing, why the hell do you launch your manifesto in Gauteng? Made no sense to me. And again, it's contested terrain here. There are too many parties vying to be at the table here. I don't, I don't get it. Maybe you'll call me and explain it, or maybe I'll call him. I just don't get it.